Hey there, fellow TypeScript fans. I'm Benny, and today we're diving deep into the exciting world of package distribution within the NPM ecosystem. By the time we're done here, you'll be a pro at selecting and downloading just the right packages for your application, all while strictly following the principles of semantic versioning. So buckle up and get ready for an epic journey. In order to better understand semantic versioning in the NPM ecosystem, we'll need to open up our NPM package and examine its files. Let's begin with the package.json file. I will quickly sort its properties alphabetically to find entries quicker. The first thing I want to talk about is the presence of the caret symbol in front of our TypeScript dependency. The caret symbol is part of what is called semantic versioning. I will explain this concept because it is important to understand and often excluded from tutorials. By the guidelines of semantic versioning, the version number consists of three components, the major version followed by the minor and patch versions. A release containing only bug fixes would increment the patch version. In our instance, 502 would become 503. When new features, performance improvements, or backward compatible refactorings get added, it is appropriate to create a minor release. This would turn 502 into 510. If changes are made to the code that break compatibility with earlier versions, the major version number would be incremented. In our case, that would turn 502 into 600. The caret symbol instructs NPM to restrict upgrades to patch or minor level updates without permitting major version updates. By altering the caret symbol to a tilde symbol, we would only receive more recent versions at the patch level. Therefore, if version 5, 1.0 were to exist, we would not receive it. However, if version 5, 0.3 existed, we would obtain it. Using a caret allows upgrading to higher version numbers, while a tilde restricts upgrades to patch versions. A helpful way to remember this is to think of a house. The tilde is the floor, while the caret represents the rooftop, enabling you to reach higher version numbers. There's also another syntax available. If you're not concerned with the precise minimum version and simply want to obtain the most recent patch version, you can use the notation 5.0 x. Likewise, to obtain the latest minor version along with its most recent patch, you can use 5 xx. It's important to note that when you make changes to the version numbers, you should use the npm update command to apply these changes. Unlike npm install, which only downloads a compatible version, NPM update will also update the package to the latest version that matches the specified range. You might wonder, how can I determine which version was actually downloaded? This is where the package lock JSON file becomes relevant. It records the exact version retrieved during the initial installation or after any subsequent updates. This allows future runs of NPM install to download the same build, ensuring reproducible results. We can see in our package lock JSON file that TypeScript was resolved to version 502, and we can also see where it has been downloaded from. The npmjs.org registry is npm's default registry. It has a website where we can find all registered packages. On npmjs.org, you can explore the packages with an overview of available version numbers. It is crucial to highlight that tags can be used too. You can install a specific version by using the npm install command followed by a version number or tag. Examples, npm i, dash capital D, TypeScript at 502, or npm i, dash capital D, TypeScript at latest. Let me emphasize the importance of using npm update. If you don't have a package lock JSON file, and you declare the TypeScript dev dependency using the tilde symbol, running npm install will create a lock file for you. This file will lock your TypeScript version to the latest patch level, which can be above the version you declared with the tilde. If you then try to use the caret symbol and run npm install again, you won't see any changes. The previously downloaded and locked version is compatible with your dependency declaration, so nothing will be updated. To update to the latest minor version, you need to run npm update which will enforce an update in the package lock JSON file based on your package.json file. If you're unsure which version of a dependency you have, you can use the npm explain command, 
followed by the name of the dependency. This will give you information on the downloaded version and type of dependency. It will also tell you where it was defined, which can be helpful when working in a monorepository. To test your ability to match version numbers, you can visit semver.npmjs.com. Here, you can input the name of the package you're interested in and experiment with various version ranges. You can perform an exact match using the format 483 or use the tilde symbol to match all patch versions within the same minor version range. The caret symbol matches all minor versions upward within the same major version range. Additionally, you can use the wildcard to match any version and the latest tag will give you the most recent version available. You can also try the alternative syntax using x.x to match all currently available versions of the fifth major version. By the way, you can also use comparison operators to specify a range of versions. Just give it a try and explore the different syntax examples. After learning how to select a specific package version, let's understand the differences between a standard dependency, development dependency, and peer dependency. We know already that development dependencies, such as TypeScript, are being used during the design time. Standard dependencies, on the other hand, are required during runtime and are usually actively imported in the application code. For instance, consider the popular date formatting library Moment. If you import it in your main code, you need to install it as a standard dependency. This can be done using npm install double dash save moment. The save option tells npm to create an entry in the dependencies section of our package.json file. It's the default option as of npm version 5, so you can skip it if you are using a recent npm version. Pro tip! If you ever wish to skip installing development dependencies, you can use the npm install command and passing dev to the omit option. Alright, time to tackle the mighty peer dependencies. In some cases, when a package is built on top of another package, it's a good practice to declare the host package as a peer dependency. This is a common use case for plugins. An excellent example of a package that uses peer dependencies is the Moment Range plugin. When we take a closer look at this plugin, we can see that it expects the Moment package to be imported before importing the plugin itself. This is why Moment is listed as a peer dependency, because it acts as a host and the plugin cannot function properly without it. In the case of Moment Range, we can observe that peer dependencies usually have a broader version range to ensure compatibility with multiple versions. Specifically, we can see that the plugin mandates a minimum of Moment version 2. In addition to its peer dependency on Moment, Moment Range also has a regular dependency on ES6 symbol. This means that when you install Moment Range as a dependency in your project, ES6 symbol will also be installed as a transitive dependency. A transitive dependency refers to a dependency that is indirectly required by a package through another dependency. In other words, it is a dependency of a dependency. It's important to be aware of transitive dependencies because they can quickly add up. A useful command in npm is npm explain, which can help you determine the reason behind the inclusion of a certain dependency in your project. The impact of this phenomenon has actually gained meme status in the world of npm and Node.js. So welcome to the club of the cool kids. It's quiz time. Let's start with an easy question to warm up. What is the distinction between a major and a minor version? Can you explain the differences between tilde and caret symbols? How do npm install save and npm install save dev differ from each other? Why is npm update so important? What steps would you take to install a runtime dependency? Why is there a meme about the node modules directory? While these questions are primarily focused on npm, the knowledge gained from them will not be a waste. Knowing the answers sets apart the good from the great. In the upcoming video, we will discover how to compile TypeScript code for a particular target platform and fine-tuning our IDE for optimal development feedback.